In this lesson, we'll take a look at uh, quadratic relations. And the first example, we're going to graph the uh, relation y equals negative 0.5 x squared plus 4, and just using a table of values. Now, it's fairly normal to uh, in your table to take numbers from about negative 3 to 3, negative 2 to 2, something like that. Generally, you want a few numbers below 0, a few numbers above, and that usually gives you enough to draw the graph and what's interesting about the graph. So in order to get the y values, basically these seven numbers are the x values of seven ordered pairs we're going to graph, use to graph this uh, relation. So we're going to substitute each of these negative 3, negative 2, etc. in place of x. And so, for example, to get this first y value, we're going to substitute negative 3 there. So it'll be negative 0.5 times negative 3 squared plus 4. Now negative 3 squared is 9, and 9 times negative 0.5 is uh, negative 4.5 and then when you add 4 to it you get negative 0.5 so that's the calculation to find that y value so that's the point negative 3 comma negative 0.5 and we'll graph it when we get all the rest done so next we would substitute negative 2 in place of x so negative 0.5 times negative 2 squared plus 4 remember your order of operations we would do this first so that's 4 negative 2 squared is 4 4 times negative a half would be negative 2 plus 4 would be 2. And then we substitute negative 1 in and evaluate that. So that's the y value there. We get 3.5. And, and then 0. And of course, 0 squared is 0 times negative 0.5 or any other number is still 0. Uh, plus 4 would just give you 4. And then we do the 1. And now 1 squared is the same as negative 1 squared. So the y value for this one should be the same as the y value for this one. You get 3.5 again. 2 squared and negative 2 squared are the same, so this y value and this should be the same. And the same with the uh, 3 squared one. 3 squared and negative 3 squared are both 9, so if that's negative 0.5, this should be the same. And so these are ordered pairs. So negative 3, negative 0.5 would be right there. And then negative 2, 2, so negative 2 up to 2 would be right here. And so we graph the rest of those points. 0, 4 would be right there. That's the vertex. 1, 3 and a half, 2, 2, and then 3, negative 0.5. And we draw a smooth curve between them. Now I've just connected them from the first to last. The graph does actually continue down here and down here. So that's not the entire graph. It does keep on going down. And of course it's a good idea to write your equation beside your uh, graph on the grid. So that's uh, how you can graph a quadratic relation using a table of values. In the second example, we're given a couple of relations and we're going to use a table of values again to determine whether they are quadratic or linear and using finite differences, which is the differences between the, the consecutive or successive y values. And so uh, I've already got the first y value done here. This is the equation y equals 3x plus 5. And if you know anything about equations, you can tell that that one's going to be linear. Uh, it's in the form y equals mx plus b. But I'm just, I want to demonstrate using a table of values how you could show that as well. So to get the next y value here, we would substitute negative 1 in place of x. Now, you do need to have the x values go in uh, a specific order. And it's a good idea for them to go up in increments of 1, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, etc. If they're all mixed up, then you can't tell from the finite differences until you order them whether they're linear or quadratic or something else. So we would substitute negative 1 in place of x. So 3 times negative 1 plus 5. That's negative 3 plus 5 would be 2. So we'll put a 2 there. And then we'll put 0 in place of x. So that's 0 plus 5, of course, would be 5. And then we'll put 1 in place of x. So 3 times 1 plus 5. That's 3 plus 5 would be 8. And then we'll do the 2. So 3 times 2 is 6 plus 5 would be 11 here. Now, we're going to calculate the differences between the successive y values. So from negative 1 to 2, that's increased by 3. And with the actual calculation, what you would like punch in your calculator, you would go 2, subtract negative 1. That gives you 3. 5 subtract 2 is also 3. 8 minus 5 is also 3. And 11 minus 8 is also 3. And so because the first differences, that's the first uh, column of differences, some people use the word row, but uh, rows generally go horizontally. This is actually a column. Columns go up and down. The first differences are all three, so that's why this would be linear. 
that 3 is actually the slope of the uh, line. It's, that's why that's a 3 there as well. Okay, let's do the second one here. So again, I'm using x values from negative 2 to 2. And if you want to use different numbers, you can. If you want to use, uh, you know, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, that, that would still just work just fine. So we're going to substitute negative 2 in place of x. So it would be negative 2 squared plus 5 times negative 2. So that's 4 minus 10. 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. 4 minus 10 would be negative 6. And then we'll still substitute a 1, sorry, negative 1 in. So that's positive 1 minus 5 would be negative 4. And then we'll do 0. 0 squared plus 5 times 0. Of course, that's all zero, so this is just a 0 here. And then we'll do 1. So uh, 1 squared is 1 plus, uh, this would be 5, would give you 6. And then we'll do the 2 as well. 2 squared plus 5 times 2, that's 4, plus 10 would be 14. And we'll calculate the differences again. So this will be the first differences. From negative 6 to negative 4, that's increased by 2. And the actual calculation, again, you would put in your calculator negative 4 and subtract the number above it. Because we want to know the change from this number to this one. So second one minus the first one. That's positive 2. From negative 4 to 0, that's gone up by 4. 0 take away negative 4 is 4. 6 minus 0 would be 6, and 14 minus 6 would be 8. So notice that the first differences, these are the first differences, are not all the same. So this is not linear. Now we'll calculate the differences from 2 to 4 to 6 to 8. So this is another column or row of differences, and so these are called the second differences. From 2 to 4, it's increased by 2. From 4 to 6, it's increased by 2. And from 6 to 8, it's also increased by 2. So notice that the second differences are all the same. So that's why this would be a quadratic relation. Uh, another example, um, a bridge support uh, is a parabolic shape. And so we're told that its arch is described by this form of the height at any point. And what W represents is the uh, width from the center in meters is negative 0 0.05 times that value width squared plus 8. So h is the height and w is the width in meters, the, the width from the, the center. And we're asked to graph the relation, so we're going to do it using a table of values. Now, to make up this table of values, you'd have to do a little bit of experimenting in your calculator to know what, what numbers to take for w. If you just go negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, for example, you'll only graph a, par a portion of the graph. Uh, we want the whole thing, like from the bottom one side to the top and then to the other side. So for example, if you sub if you grabbed a, a, a w value that's too small, this is what happens. So I'm, I'm going from negative 12 to 12, but let's say you started with a number like negative 15 or negative 20. Um, if you substitute that in place of w in here, so you go negative 0 0.05 times negative 15 squared plus uh, 8, you actually get, and this calculation gives you the height. Now notice this value is below zero. So we're really not concerned where the height of this parabola is below zero because the height would have to only be a positive number. So that's why a number like negative 15, although we can substitute in the formula, it's not important for this particular application because we would not have any heights that are negative. If this is a bridge that's in the water, we're really not concerned with where the bridge is below the water, probably. Okay, unless perhaps you're an engineer. So I'm going to start from numbers from negative 12 and up to 12. I'm, I'm going up in increments of 4, so you don't have to do negative 12, negative 11, negative 10, etc., every single one. You, if you wanted to, you could. There's nothing wrong with that. Give you a very detailed and accurate graph. So we're putting negative 12 in place of uh, w here. So negative 12 squared is 144 times negative 0 0.005 and then add 8 works out to 0 0.8. So it's almost where the height is 0. It's very close. And then if we put negative 8 in place of w, uh, that works out to a height of 4.8. And then negative 4. So that's 16 times negative 0 0.005 plus 8. And that works out to a height of 7.2 meters above ground level or water level, whatever the, the bridge is over. And then 0, of course, this part would all be 0, plus 8 would give you a height of 8. That's the highest point in the graph. And then we go to 4, and 4 would be the same as negative 4, so that's why it's 7.2 again. Uh, for the 8 one, it would be the same as uh, negative 8, because 8 squared and negative 8 are the same thing. So 4.8 again, and then back down to 0 0.8. 
And so if we graph these, negative 12, so negative 12.8 would be about right there, just below the 1. Negative 8, 4.8, so negative 8, 4.8 would be just, again, just below the 5 there. And we'll graph the rest of the points. And you can see the uh, bridge taking shape. And we draw a smooth curve between them. And so you can tell that the um, where it crosses, let's say this is the water here, it crosses at about negative 12 and a half and positive 12 and a half. And so we can use that to answer question B, how tall and wide is the arch? Well, this is the height, so 8 meters is, is the highest point right in the middle. And it goes from negative 12 and a half to 12 and a half. So uh, if we, uh, this distance would be 12 and a half, this distance would be 12 and a half. So it's about 25 meters wide. Uh, last page here is just a summary of uh, some important characteristics of a quadratic relation. Uh, there's, there's are, there are different, there's three basic equations you study in the grade 10 course. And this is the standard form of a quadratic relation. So if you see an equation like ax squared plus bx plus c, and a and b and c are just constants, they're real numbers, like uh, perhaps this is 2 and negative 3 and c is 1 or something like that, then that's, uh, that's going to be the graph of a quadratic relation or a parabolic shape. Now, uh, these parabolas either uh, open down, so this does keep on going down here, or this one keeps on going up. This point right here is called the vertex, and this would be a maximum point because it's a highest point in that curve. This would be a minimum point for this one or a lowest point on this curve. These dotted lines, these blue dotted lines in the middle, are called axes of symmetry, and they cut the uh, parabola in two exactly equal halves. So, for example, if I were to reflect this parabola in that line, it would look exactly the same. So, the axis of symmetry is just, it's used to draw the graph, but it's not actually part of the graph. And it's an important characteristic of the graph. Now, if a relation is quadratic, then the first differences are not all the same but the second differences would be constant. If the first differences are the same, it's actually a linear relationship. If the second differences are the same, it's quadratic. And that's the end of the lesson.